Hey you guys, it's been a while since I've been out on the road or played the drums. <laughs> but I still remember how important equipment endorsements are to young musicians. Equipment endorsements give us the opportunity to have the equipment that we need to perform successfully on stage, on tour, and also in the studio. They also give musicians the credibility and exposure they need. However, a lot of musicians do not know what an endorsement is, they do not know how to get endorsements or to keep them, and they do not know when to apply for endorsements. So in this discussion, I'm going to offer 11 tips that I think are going to clear up a lot for you guys. So let's get started. So you guys, make no mistake, equipment endorsements are about attention. Essentially what an equipment endorsement is, it's an advertising relationship. A company is saying, how can we creatively advertise our products and services with the persons that actually use our product and services, right? The actual musicians. But it makes no sense for them if all you're doing is playing in your cellar and you're not exposing their products. So you have to ask yourself, what type of attention am I getting? Now, attention could be at many different levels. It could be that you're on a major tour playing in front of thousands of people or it could be that you are a music teacher at your local school and you are, you know, a getting a crop of new students in every semester and you know you're influential and the students are asking you what gear you're playing and you know that could be the attention that equipment manufacturers are looking for but again make no mistake equipment manufacturers are about advertising so keep that in mind All right, you guys, so these days when we're talking about press kits, we're essentially talking about EPKs, electronic press kits, which essentially include a bio of what you've done and what you're going to do, like what tour you're gonna go on and how many people you're gonna play in front of. And it could also be pictures of you playing the gear or wearing the t-shirts or even video of you performing on stage in front of lots of people. But essentially, keep in mind that it's not the EPK alone that's gonna get you the endorsement. It's obviously, um, everything else, the attention you're getting, etc., which I already explained. So EPKs are only like the resume. It's not the end all. So keep that in mind. I mean, sometimes people are rushing out and making their electronic press kits and they think that's what's going to get them endorsement. It's, it's what you put into it. So again, EPKs are important, but you have to understand, you know, essentially what they're for. It is not the end all. So you guys, you know, listen, don't look for free gear. Look for relationships with companies that make the equipment you love to play, first and foremost. That's the most professional way to look at this. And also keep in mind, you know, the equipment manufacturers don't want to work with people that just want free gear. They want people that are passionate about the gear, that love the gear, that know the gear, that can talk about the gear. Because essentially what you are is you're a salesperson. And when you're doing the clinic or when you're doing the interview, you or when you're talking to people about the gear they want to know that you know what you're talking about essentially and you're passionate about it and you're a true endorser so remember only pitch the people that you love You guys, remember in this business, nobody owes you anything, right? Just because you have a fast double stroke roll or a fast double bass drum roll or whatever the case is, nobody owes you an endorsement. Again, an endorsement is an advertising relationship, etc. So, you know, it, if you are calling people and they're not calling you back, if you're emailing and they're not getting back to you, don't get mad. Just understand that it might not be your time and place. And, you know, and again, it, it's about long-term building of relationships. It's not calling someone and they call you right back and then you get mad if they don't call you back. You can't think this way. So you have to be patiently persistent and tactfully tenacious when seeking out endorsements because nobody owes you anything.
You know, this is very important, you guys, and something that people don't think about, but endorsements oftentimes start at your local guitar center or Sam Ash or whatever the local music store is. This is the way I started off with endorsements. I was living in New York City and started going up to Manny's Music, and I think it was on the third floor. There was a guy named Marco. He knew me. I know him by first name, and he realized that I was a guy on the local scene that was coming up, and he's on the phone all day long with these equipment manufacturers, and he put a word in for me, and he said, hey, can we hook up Bobby with maybe a reduced price endorsement? That basically meant that when I went in to buy sticks, I got them at a lower uh, you know, rate than most people would, and this helps young musicians, especially when you're eating top ramen, right? So try to nurture relationships with local music store representatives. It is oftentimes the beginning of your endorsement relationships. So for those of you guys that don't know, NAM is a convention of equipment manufacturers, essentially. It happens two times a year. The, the big one, I think, is in, in Anaheim, California in January, and I definitely recommend that you go. Imagine a football field of equipment manufacturers, essentially, and all the representatives are there. It gives you the opportunity to go and get to know the gear, and it also gives you the opportunity to shake hands and to start build relationships, or to start building relationships. This is exactly what I did. I, I started relationships with people. Uh, oftentimes, I think it was sometimes for, for three to four, to even I think it might even be five years, just saying hi to people, not asking them for anything, just saying hi to people. And then finally, when it came time for me to actually get the endorsement, they already knew who I was, and it made it that much easier. So check out NAM. It's a good place to network and get to know gear and to start building relationships. So check it out. Maybe I'll see you there. So when you're at NAM, be sure to check out some of the newer companies as well because their prerequisites for doing endorsements might be lower than the bigger companies, right? So again though, you have to love the gear and know the gear. So when you're at NAM, check out some of the new companies that are up and coming, the new guitar company, the new drum company, and they might be interested in working with you and building relationships with you before the bigger ones would, okay? So go up, shake their hand, get to know their equipment, um, you know, and, uh, and, and, and again, this could be the start of, of a great relationship, all right? So check out newer companies as well when looking for endorsements. Let's move on to the next tip, number eight, invent something. Wow, right, invent something, easier said than done. But hey, somebody's got to invent it, and who better than you who sits in the cellar practicing 10 hours a day for the last 10 years? If anything, you know the gear better than anybody else, right? Someone had to invent that little clip that attaches to the hi-hat stand, that attaches to the second bass drum so that you can pull it in closer. Someone had to invent the double kick drum pedal that only plays on one drum, right? So why can't it be you? I have personally known people that have invented stuff and that actually resulted in endorsements and relationships with companies. So, you know, hey, it could be you. If you can find a need in the marketplace and fill it, I mean, that's essentially the sort of recipe for success in business in general, right? So uh, approach the equipment manufacturer if you have an idea and who knows, you know, maybe they'll be interested in developing it. So you guys, obviously uh, an endorsement is a contractual relationship, right? And there's different levels of contracts. There could be the 60% off contract, which I already pointed out is what I started off with, right? Where I got reduced prices. Then there was a replacement agreement where I bought the first round of symbols and then every time they broke, I sent them in and they just replaced them. And then there's the third one, which is kind of the free relationship, right? Where the my manager's Q Prime, which actually do Metallica, called me and said, hey, do you like playing Tama? Because we're going to get the band. Uh, you know, a free kit. And then basically I looked at the catalog and said, I want this, I want this, I want this. It was pre pretty, pretty awesome, right? And that's kind of like the, the fuller ride of an endorsement. And sometimes they pay for you to do clinics and advertisements, etc. But in any case, now there's an obligation that I have to the company, right? It's a two-way street. And what I have to do is I have to make sure to 
to, you know, in interviews say that I play this gear or in the liner notes of the record I have to say that I played this equipment or, you know, when the rep is, um, you know, in your local city you have to make sure that they get backstage and they're on the guest list when you're performing. And then of course you have to respect the equipment. You're not, you know, equipment endorsements are not about hooking up your friends with free gear or disrespecting and smashing the equipment and then asking for new stuff all the time. So, you know, these are just, there's not crazy obligations but you have to think about this as well. Equipment endorsements are not that's just giving you free stuff. You know, you have to do stuff in return as well. You guys, don't just ask for stuff like, you know, or, or contact endorsers when you, when you need them. You know, contact them when you maybe don't need them. You know, be a human being. Say happy holidays. Ask them out for dinner or lunch or whatever the case might be. You know, uh, show that you really care about forming a personal relationship and it's not just you want a bunch of free equipment. This is what's really important. I think it was what really helped me to be successful in the, in, the, in the endorsement sort of area is that I have nurtured relationships over the year. Even to this point right now, if I gave my equipment endorsements a call, they, the endorsers a call, they would be willing to, to, to work with me. Um, you know, I still get invited to all the parties at the NAM show and, and, and invited to come over to the booth and all the free NAM passes and all that stuff. And it's been years since I've been out on the road and touring. All right. So, it's important to keep these relationships and to, and, to, and to be human, essentially, overall, right? Very important stuff. And then finally, let's move on to tip number 11, get a big gig, right? Just go out and get a big gig and you'll get endorsements, right? Easier said than done, right, Bobby? But, uh, you know, the thing is, is the point being is, is that maybe it might be too early for you guys to even be thinking about endorsements. You know, maybe you do need to go back to tip number one that I talked about earlier and build some accomplishments first and foremost and, you know, and, and, and really be realistic about this. I myself, you know, was, was over anxious. I looked at endorsements like a Christmas present or like, you know, some reward I got for like, you know, learning my skills. Uh, you know, endorsements are an advertising relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship where product companies use you to advertise their products and you use them essentially for the exposure and credibility and professional gear. So, you know, it's a two-way street. So always remember that. So I hope you guys dug these 11 tips and that you're going to use them because they are really crucial to understanding, getting, and keeping equipment endorsements. So, all right, everybody, what we've been talking about is essentially equipment uh, endorsements and kind of giving you guys some insights into how to get them, you know, how to keep them and when to really even apply. So my name is Bobby Borg. I want to let you guys know that these tips are available in my book, Business Basics for Musicians, in its second edition. It's got the orange cover, so I hope you'll check that out. And I also hope that you'll check out other video clips as well. So what I'm trying to do is just break down music, business, and marketing basics so that they stick. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys. So hey, everybody. Thank you very much for watching that video. Definitely interested to hear what you have to say, so please leave a comment below. Maybe you can tell us uh, about some topics you'd like me to cover in the future, okay? So again, uh, thanks very much, you guys, and take care.